Assalamualaikum and very good day everyone. Today I will present my topic entitled Public Debt Dynamics in Emerging Markets the case of Malaysia. So for the introduction, as we know that Keynesian theory stated that fiscal policy can be used to stabilize economic fluctuation. However, the active implementation of fiscal policy has important consequences for fiscal position and government debt. During the global financial crisis, many countries in the world actively use fiscal policy to stabilize economy and control inflation. The recent economic crisis triggered by COVID-19 has uh, significantly affected economic activities. World Bank expects that the global economic growth shrink to 5.2% by 2020. Meanwhile, government debt ratio also expected to increase by 2021, where developed countries by 20%, emerging countries 10%, low-income countries 7%. Although developed countries have the ability to increase government spending through borrowing, but this is not the case for emerging and low-income countries because they fear, uh, because due to the risk of debt crisis. In Malaysia, the economic crisis triggered by COVID-19 have caused economic growth tumble to a negative 17.1% in the second quarter of 2020. And the government debt to GDP ratio expected to exceed statutory limit of 55% of GDP. But with a COVID-19 Act 2020, the government has increased the statutory limit 55% to 60%. So the main challenges faced by policymakers in Malaysia are to determine the appropriate timing, pace and debt reduction tools. So in this paper, we examine the public debt dynamics and focus on the effect of inflation, budget surplus, economic growth and trade openness shock on government debt in Malaysia. So they have two main contribution in this paper. First, government policy implementation, and second, contributes to the literature by analyzing the public debt dynamics using the open economy as well model. So in literature, previous studies investigating the response of public debt to fiscal policy shock seems to be in line with the Guardian and non Guardian regimes. Sajan 1982 defined Recurgent regime is when fiscal policy adjusts its stance to satisfy government budget constraint. Meanwhile, Woodford 1995 defined non recurgent regime when fiscal policy does not respond to government budget constraint. So, past studies discover that fiscal policy consistent follow the recurgent regime can be found in Bond 1998. Canzoneri 2001, Afonso 2002, Favoro and Kia Bazi 2007, Pelivan and Belly 2016, and Kesali and Renault 2020. While for the non decadian regime, previous studies can be found in Apiat and Austria 2005, Tam 2006, Atinasi and Metelli 2017, and Urguhat 2021. So in this paper, we use quarterly data from 1980 quarter 1 to 2020 quarter 3. And we divided the variable into two blocks. The first block consists of foreign variables, while the second block consists of domestic variables. And in foreign block, we include three variables, such as world oil price, foreign national income, and foreign monetary policy. And for domestic block, we include six variables such as domestic national income, domestic inflation, government debt, trade openness, budget surplus, and domestic interest rate. So in this study, we apply SPA model in investigating the impact of macroeconomic shocks on the public debt dynamics. And we use Cholesky decomposition uh, to uh, orthogonalize the variance covariance metric. So these are the ordering uh, variables in our paper. Okay. So first we uh, order world oil price 
foreign national income, foreign monetary policy, trade openness, domestic national income, budget surplus, government debt, domestic inflation, and domestic monetary policy. We know, we know that the result could be sensitive to variable ordering. Thus, uh, theoretical considerations are used in this paper. For example, foreign variables are placed ahead of domestic variables and regarded as fully exogenous to the to domestic variable. So this indicates that domestic variables respond to foreign variables contemporaneously but not otherwise. So for the result, first we check the stationary for each variable using augmented Dickey Fuller test. And we found that only five variables have reached stationary in the label form. The presence of, of either the deterministic and stochastic trend could induce non-stationary variable to present. So this leads to the question whether a spa model should be specified in terms of first difference or level. Since 1980 and since 1990, stated that the objective of VAR is to determine the interrelationship between variables, not to estimate parameter. Thus, they advise against differencing and suggest that variable in bar model be in label even if the variables contain a unit root. So, in this paper, we specify spar model in labels following their recommendation. And the optimal leg we use in VAR system is 6, suggested by the Akaiki information criteria. And the selection of 6 legs sufficient to eliminate second and fourth order autocorrelation as shown in table 2 uh, and the estimate from the VAR companion metric reported that the agent values are less than 1 so according to Lut poll if the agent value is less than 1 the VAR process is said to be stable so these are the result of ADF test result and the leg length selection of VAR and for the result of impulse response function Figure 1 summarizes the result of the response of government debt to a positive shock in the budget surplus. And for the confidence interval, we use whole bootstrap method with a confidence level of 90% and number of bootstrap repetition of 1000 used in this paper. So the result indicates that the government debt responds negatively and significantly following a budget surplus shock. And the statistically significant response occur between first and fifth quarters after the shock. So the result suggests evidence of the Ricardian regime. And previous empirical studies also found Ricardian regime for instance, Baharumsa et al. 2017, Khalid et al. 2018, and Sheriff and Hassan of 2018. And for the response of government tip to other macroeconomic variables, first we look on uh, the response of government debt to domestic inflation shock. And we found that government debt respond negatively and significantly as shown in the figure 2a. The statistically significant response occur in the first quarter and reoccur between third and the 16 quarters. So this finding is actually consistent with the expectation of government budget constraint. Uh, stated that unexpected inflation or inflationary shock caused a reduction in the government debt. So previous empirical stu uh, studies also found a negative association between government debt and inflation. For example, Renet and Rogoff 2010, Hall and Sargent 2011, Eisman and Marion 2011, Sheriff and Hassan of 2018. And for the response of government debt to domestic income shock, we found negative and significantly, also consistent with the theory. The government debt ratio discovered to decline as domestic national income increase, and this consistent with the government budget constraint. And recent empirical study, for example, Cherif and Hassan of 2018 discovered that economic growth reduced government debt. And for the response of government debt to domestic monetary policy shock, we found positive effect. This finding implies that contractionary monetary policy induced the accumulation of government debt and this is in line with the economic theory uh, which state that rising financial costs lead to increased debt accumulation 
And for the threat openness shock, we found that initially the government that respond is positive and significant. However, the reaction shifted negative and significant in the third quarter and reoccur in the sixth quarter and continue. The positive response of government debt is in line with the compensation hypothesis, although it occurs initially. The negative reaction of government debt is consistent with the efficient hypothesis, which is more valid as government debt decrease from sixth quarter and continue. So these are the result, uh, the response of government debt to other the macroeconomic variables. Discussion and conclusion. In this study, an open economy structural bar used to analyze public debt dynamic. So there are several conclusions can be drawn from the empirical finding. First, uh, fiscal policy response discovered to be consistent with the current regime. The positive shock of the budget surplus lead to a reduction in the government debt ratio. Second, government debt has been observed to be decreasing as a result of domestic inflation shock. This finding demonstrates that rising inflation can lead to a reduction in, in real government debt. Third, positive economic growth can help to reduce government debt ratio. And fourth, threat openness has a favorable effect on government debt reduction as predicted by the efficient hypothesis. And for uh, uh, implication for the implementation of fiscal policy, we have stated three uh, implication. First, since the response of government debt to budget surplus is negative, indicating that fiscal authority in Malaysia satisfy the temporal budget constraint, thus the implementation of public finance reform through fiscal consolidation can ensure the sustainability of debt. Second, threat openness policy helps to reduce government debt. However, the government must be must take precaution because openness uh, can increase uh, Malaysian economy to an external, external shock. Third, since inflation can reduce real government debt, monetary authorities must exercise greater caution when implementing a contractionary monetary policy to combat inflation, as this measure can increase the cost of government debt. And these are the, re, uh, the some references in our paper. And thank you. That's all.